What's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? It's your boy, Rio Robinson, back with the latest and greatest on the Rambling with Rio YouTube channel, where we ramble about the Washington Commanders. Today is Tuesday, July 19th, and we are officially, finally, one week away from NFL training camp and our commanders, our first commanders training camp under the new name, under the new mantra and moniker. Seven days away. It feels like the name change happened like two weeks ago, but it was ultimately over five months ago. And it's time to start talking about just football shit, man. It's time to put all that trivial shit away, to get daily updates league-wide. You can actually turn on ESPN again because there's more than baseball on TV. And once the Hall of Fame game kicks off, we are not going without football again till around Valentine's Day. And for that, I'm going to clap it up because this is the best time of year for me. This is like Christmas. We're a week away from Christmas. This is summer Christmas. And I'm just here to touch base with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I got a live stream coming up tomorrow, 845, with my boys from the Command This podcast, formerly known as the Washington Football Addicts, where we're going to be chopping it up a little bit more than football. But we're, we're going we're gonna to do a little top five. We're going to go around the league. We're going to talk some non-sports stuff at all as we're expanding the content on the channel. But today, we're just excited, man. I'm just excited. Let me know in the comments, what are y'all excited about? What are y'all looking most forward to? for training camp but this episode like all episodes are brought to you by washington on the daily peep the shirt the merch is fire on instagram at wsh on the daily my guy ray Pereira and company they add all the all the real-time news reactions and fan interactions that you can imagine on the instagram platform you want to make sure you're following that page and if you're going to get your calvin ridley parlay poppy on do it with bet us sportsbook and casino using my unique link and description below using code join 125 in the process but it's time next week it's all eyes on 11. it's all eyes on 17. It's all eyes on 99, even though I believe he's going to start on Pup, him and Logan Thomas. All eyes on Curtis Samuel. Will he be on the side field this year, or are we going to put away the side field nickname? Is Benjamin St. Jude's going to back? Is he going to Is he gonna come back with a vengeance off an array of concussions last year? Will the offensive line stand its ground and still be a great unit this year? After the losses of Eric Flowers and Brandon Sheriff, the guard, Jay Gruden's favorite player. There's a lot of storylines going on. What's the backfield going to look like? Gibson's looking spry. He's lost 12 to 15 pounds. Hopefully we see that 4-3 speed that he ran at the college level when he was just a receiver. We got the rookie class to look forward to. What's that tight end room going to look like if Logan's on the pup to start the season? So what is Cole Turner and John Bates and even, you know, shocker, Antonio Gandy Golden? What's he going to look like in the mix of the tight end room? And even a project guy like Samus Reyes who's still learning the sport. But I'm looking at position battles. I'm looking at the right guard position. It, it should be Trey Turner with his resume, even though he was not very good last year. His resume has a lot more luster to it than Wes Schweitzer, but Wes is a dog. Most nimble bastard on the team. This dude is like a big dancing bear. If you if you follow him on social media, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This has to be the most nimble 300 plus pound man in the world, in all existence. Shit, I call him Kung Fu Panda. You know what I'm saying? We got competition at that position. What is Brian Robinson going to bring to the running back room? Will he be able to spell Gibson? Will it, will it be a one-two punch thunder and lightning combo like D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart was when Ron Rivera was in Carolina? And speaking of Ron Rivera in Carolina, there's two notions I look at when I look at this season. Ron took off in year three with the Carolina Panthers. And years that he missed the playoffs in Carolina, he on average wins nine plus games a season. So he told us three to five years to build a culture. Culture is now instilled. It is time to see results. It's time to see it. 
The schedule's playing fairer than it was last year. We don't run the gauntlet of elite God-level tier quarterbacks this year. We open the season with Jacksonville and Detroit. That's going to be an early test for us because we need this team to get off to a fast start. Washington Nation, hear me when I say this. I've never seen this team make the playoffs off of just being good throughout the season. I'm talking wins sprinkled in every month. The only way I've ever seen us make the playoffs is we go on some godlike run to end the season. 2005, we're five and six, won five in a row, playoffs. 2007, we won our last four, nine and seven, playoffs. 2012, three and six, won seven in a row, 10 and six, playoffs. Kirk Cousins, 2015, we won like four of our last five games. We got hot at the end. For what? In my lifetime, I would love to experience winning in September, winning in my birthday month of October. Shout out to Libras all worldwide. Winning some in the month of Thanksgiving. Just spread the damn wins out through the season. If we're going to win 11 games like I predict us to win this year, we have to get off to a fast start. Jacksonville week one at home, winnable. Detroit week two. That's a gutty team. They fight their asses off for Dan Campbell. Winnable game. Week three, we got the unstoppable all-star 2.0 dream team Eagles at home. Winnable. Week four, we go to Dallas. Dallas will be probably a heavy favorite, but it's division. And you know when it comes to the division, you keep it in the family. You throw all of that extra shit out. It's always a winnable game because you know each other. They're your closest enemy. They're like your enemy, your friend, all of that good shit. You know everything about each other. They know who we are. We know who they are. Winnable game. And then we got the Titans week five. That means five winnable games. There's not a daunting favorite till much later in the season. So these guys got to get after it off the early. And that starts in the summertime. That starts in training camp. What's the energy going to be like? Our players staying healthy. Our players well conditioned. They open up camp. They got conditioning for the first day. And then they open camp to the public, I believe, on Friday the 29th. It might be Thursday the 28th, but if I'm correct, Friday the 29th is the first day camp is open to public for the fans. I have bones to pick with the franchise on how they've handled training camp this year. You know, I'm not going to make this just about me because that's selfish and I'm just one fan of millions. But when you're bringing in year one, of a new moniker, a new name, and new traditions for a franchise, you would think that would be enough to make this training camp experience as open and interactive as ever. Because you wanna push anticipation. You wanna build and drive excitement and camaraderie throughout the fan base. But for some reason, since camp's not gonna be in Richmond this year, it's gonna be at the facilities at Commander's Park in Ashburn, They did this lottery system, and it's going to be a more intimate setting. It's going to be a smaller setting, and the capacity for fans is going to be significantly decreased than what we're used to. So fans only got to choose one day to pick go to camp. Like, they gave the option for more than one day for season ticket holders, but I'm going one day. Me and the group chat boys, we should be up there. If you see us on Friday the 29th, say what's up. Come snap a flick with us. Come chop it up with us. Let's talk ball and let's watch practice. But I think fans have the right to be upset with the way that they've handled access and capacity of training camp. The availability of tickets to training camp this year, it's no bueno. We live and we learn. I'm not going to berate the team for everything they do, but I'm also not going to praise them and wave pom-poms for everything they do. I love you, my guys. Jason, Joey, the crew, I love y'all. Y'all drop the ball on this one, man. I think there should be more access to training camp. I think there should it should be much easier to get there, and they should be pushing to make this the largest attended training camp in the history of the franchise considering you're Raymond in the new permanent name but hey we're gonna see they did bring back the friday night football event except it's on saturday this year saturday 
uh, July, bleh, Saturday, August 6th, they're doing the open practice event at FedEx Field. And they're going to have the taste of FedEx Field in the club level, which I was a huge fan of last year. You get to taste all uh, like an array of different food places and new options to eat in the stadium throughout the year. Everything's free. Last year, the Hog Wild Sunday was a big hit. They had a plethora of amazing meats and desserts and stuff upstairs. And last year, they was giving drinks too. Not a big drinker, but if that's for you, get it in. Hope to see y'all up there August 6th. Hopefully, they bring back the laser show because last year, the laser show and the fireworks, that was one of my highlights of ever being at that stadium. That was a great time. My dude, JCB, Joey Kobe Begovich does it big. But yeah, and then the following week, the first ever time we're going to see the Commanders take the field versus the Carolina Panthers, Saturday, August 13th, 1 p.m. at FedEx Field. We got Baker Mayfield, Matt Corral, and Sam Darnold coming to town. The Commanders, if you will. I think we also dropped the ball in not doing joint practices with the Panthers. That seems like the easiest lifeline to get a joint practice is with the team that we always do business and we have history with here. The Commanders. We couldn't get a Commanders live uh, um, or joint practice. That would have been phenomenal to see. Biggest mem- One of my biggest memories ever of Washington training camp was going to a joint practice versus the Patriots and just watching the Patriot way up close and watching Goat God Brady just absolutely eviscerate our defense. Meanwhile, Robert Griffin the third, Bobby Three Sticks, Brittle Bob, his corny ass could not complete a pass. Bless his heart. But I think we dropped the ball on attendance and we dropped the ball on not getting joint practices in. But this is not a pile where we're just going to sit here and complain. I'm ready for football. I'm excited to see him at camp. I'm excited to see what this offense looks like. I'm excited to see if the defense is finally going to live up to its name and all the players play to their draft position. I'm excited to see Chase Young come back off an injury. He's in his bag with the tutelage of Warren Sapp and Von Miller this offseason? Are we going to see a newly improved arsenal of pass rush ability from Montez Sweat and Chase Young? Will Jonathan Allen build on this dominant, should have been all pro season from last year? Deron Payne, he's not only playing to impress what we have in the building, he's he's playing to impress the league because it's a contract year for the guy. If he's not going to get a bag or an extension here, he someone's got to give it to him. And he's got to go out and take his money. What is the linebacker room going to look like? Are we going to bring in an AJ Klein, a Joe Schobert? Are we going to bring in a guy? Or are we going to roll with these young dudes? Is Jamin Davis going to look like a guy this year? Because he didn't look like one last year. He's a rookie, and I understand the difficulty of playing linebacker in the NFL and how the speed of the position and all of the calling and stuff and playing out of position at the mic. What is Cole Holcomb going to do with the mic? Will we be seeing David Mayo play significant snaps? Do we have a number one cornerback? That is like the main question that I feel like we're not talking about. Is it St. Juice? Is William Jackson going to live up to $14 million a year? Are we going to see the Kendall Fuller of the first month of the season where he was putrid last year or the duration of the season where he was actually our best cornerback on our roster? So many ifs, ands, question marks, and storylines await preseason football, training camp. I can't wait to just sit back and turn on training camp live on NFL Network and just sit back and just listen and take in all the glory of football season finally arriving. But that's all I got for y'all right now. Make sure you like this video. Comment what you're looking forward to most about this preseason and training camp series coming up. And be on the lookout for the group chat. I mean, be on the lookout for the live streams we got coming up on the channel. We got the Command This Pod coming on tomorrow next week i got the big three of washington commanders content community louis t street scores and ed oliver coming on the channel so you know we're gonna do it big and then the following week we're gonna have the carolina uh the carolina cat chronicle c3 panthers podcast coming on for a live stream to do our first game preview 
of the 2022 NFL football season. But that's all I got for now. Make sure y'all sub to the channel. We're trying to hit 5K before the season starts or whenever we get there. Let's get there by my birthday at least, October 14th. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Hail to the Washington Commanders.